What's that? Oh. Oh. You want to know why you shouldn't buy this truck? Well, stay tuned. Yeah. All right. So you're here for the reasons why you should not buy this 6.0 power stroke. Although it's a very good looking truck, there are reasons why you should be afraid of it. Now these reasons are not necessarily my first one I'm going to say is the least reason why you shouldn't buy, the, buy this truck. It's going to be in just some sort of random order. Um, but my first reason for not, or trying to convince you not to buy this truck, is that you're going to have to put a lot of work into this truck to make it reliable. Um, you figured, you know, you buy a truck that's got miles on it that needs the the regular O-rings and EGR cooler, etc. You're looking at, I don't know. I mean, you do it right. You're going to do it right with everything remote oil cooler. Um, you're probably looking close to $10,000 redoing the turbo, etc. Um, so you're putting 15,000 in, or sorry, you're putting in 10,000. You might get the truck for around 12 or 15. That sucks. That sucks to know that you're going to buy a truck and you know you're going to be putting money into it. Yeah. So that's my, one of the reasons, that's a big reason, but yeah, you know, the way that diesel prices are these days, it's not the worst reason. Um, I put it as, a, as another reason. This has to do with kind of like things you have to do to fix it when you get this truck are O-rings. There's O-rings for your, probably for your injectors. There's oh. O-rings for the yeah, standpipes. There's O-rings for the dummy the plugs. Um, there's ST f snap yeah, to connect, STC that? fitting that, no. it's not an O-ring, but it's another part of Ford's initial design that sucked that you're going to have to work on. I was wondering, I got all the new O-rings for my standpipes and dummy plug, etc. And I just wonder, uh, they're better, I know, but are they going to fail on me at some point? And when they fail on me, um, I guess I could start the truck. It's usually going to be a, a hot no start, but still um, something to think about in the sense that there's these little plastic things that you're depending on to get your truck to start in the morning. Um, so going on to number three. Okay, this is a big one. So, you know, I bought this truck in 2020. It's an 06, that's 14 years. It was 14 years old at that point. Now we're into 2023, 14, 15, 16. Now we got a 17 year old truck, which again, I mean, I still think it looks really good for a 17 year old truck. It's garage kept. It's, in my mind, got everything I would want out of a truck. Um, would probably want it to be a F350, just so I can tow heavier. I would want it to have an exhaust brake. I'm not towing right now, but I plan on it. I had to stop no more. So, you know, you're putting some dollars, you're putting a potential, like I said, twelve to $15,000 of money into your truck, and then you're going to put another close to $10,000 in to make it reliable. Um... And then you're you're into it for close to twenty five, maybe thirty thousand dollars. And again, you still have a seventeen year old truck, which um, I don't know. To me, it doesn't sound like the most fantastic thing in the world. You might as well buy a new truck. That's more reliable. Yeah, I guess you might have payments, but um, it's newer. So my next reason. Uh, this isn't a bad reason for me. It's loud, right? I mean, you look at new diesel trucks. Um, they're pretty quiet. You could have, you know, I'm not turning it on right now, but you can have a conversation and the truck can be on. Well, not this truck. And I got rid of the, the, um, the muffler and I got a five inch from the cat and I'm probably gonna take the cat out at some point. It's a lot louder. 
and you can't have a conversation out there. So it's not your typical newer diesel that's going to be quiet and purring. She's loud, but again, I like it that way. I think that's how a diesel a diesel well, should how operate. How the the oh yeah, that's right, Luke. So on to the next one. I gotta get my my book here. Let's see what we got. Okay, this is one that I think maybe kind of more compares to a Cummins. So I'm fairly handy. I feel like I could probably pull a turbo. I probably can probably could do an EGR cooler. But I've owned a Cummins before. They're way easier. I've done injectors for a Cummins. I've done injector lines. Um, you know, I'm sure if you've been in the market, I'm assuming that's why you might be looking at this one, or you know, I just might might like 60 content. But one second. But there's a lot of garbage in here, and to get to your turbo, you got to pull some stuff out of the way. It's actually not that bad, but it's way more than you're thinking. If you had to pull your EGR cooler, forget about it. It's a lot. It's all right, Luke. So that's the reason why, another reason why you should consider, you know, maybe buying a Cummins. You want to get down? Yeah. Okay, hold on a minute. Um, you sure you want down? All right, t time out. I got to put my son on his truck. On to the next reason. I got this as my number six reason, um, which is I think a good thing to think about. So I think we all say, oh, I'm gonna keep my truck. It's the best truck in the world. I'm never gonna sell it, never gonna sell it. You should look at all the different diesel, you know, diesel channels on YouTube. They always say, they say the same thing and then they end up selling it. So um, understand, like okay, you're putting, a 15,000 initial purchase depending on the miles of the truck and the condition of the truck plus approximately 10 to make it reliable and then you're going to put it on the market and I think I told you in one of my other videos is that the diesel market, the used market is hot, right? But you go and look at PowerStroke 6 O's, you're still, it's still 15,000. I guarantee you if you put everything in it you're not going to get more. You might get 17, but you're definitely not going to get close to what you put into it. As opposed to an LBZ or third gen 5.9 Cummins, you're, you're going to get a lot more value uh, when you sell it. And um, so you kind of have to be ready to purchase this truck and ready to keep it. If you really want to if you want to buy this truck, don't, if you have any hesitations about, you know, you're not sure if this is going to be a truck for you or you don't have any, hes if you don't have any hesitations about the idea, things are going to go wrong with this truck. Things will go wrong with this truck. I've, like I said, I've done a remote, uh, remote oil cooler, uh, bulletproof EGR, EGR cooler, um, all aluminum, Mishimoto radiator with Mishimoto hoses up and down intercooler pipes, turbos clean. What else? That's close to it. I still have to do ball joints, etc. So, you know, I made the mistakes of trying to sell diesels. I've learned that I'm literally never gonna be happy with anything I have. And so, so that's my baby. He, she ain't going nowhere. So that's my, that was my sixth reason. The seventh reason, seventh reason um, I think is a, good thing to think about like what kind of truck owner are you what kind of vehicle owner are you do you like working on things do you like doing maintenance on your vehicles because if you don't like doing maintenance on your vehicles or you're not organized or you put things off or you're busy or you got a lot, a lot of things going on with kids or whatever this truck needs TLC it needs oil changes Sorry, I had to cut it off. Got a neighbor that walked by. It's embarrassing to be talking to myself in front of the camera and to you guys. Um, but my point was, it takes a lot of maintenance. If you don't do the maintenance, you're gonna screw everything up. Especially if you have the uh, factory oil cooler. Because not only do you have to get your, your oil changed regularly to maintain the injectors and stuff, etc. If your coolant isn't replaced at a proper time, 
your oil cooler is going to get clogged up. And if your oil, get, oil cooler gets clogged up, your EGR is going. And if you're not paying attention or if you don't have a computer to check your uh, deltas, that's how bad things happen. So that's my one or many griefs on why you should think about purchasing this truck. Um, it's eighth reason. And I don't know about it now. They always say, well, you got to make sure you find a good mechanic to that knows how to work on these things if you're not going to do it yourself. I think you're pretty much, these days, a 17-year-old truck. I'm assuming it's a dealer, or sorry, I'm assuming it's a um, diesel mechanic shop. Probably wouldn't take it to a regular mechanic. Um, they know these trucks by now. I mean, if I know what I know just through YouTube, I, I'm assuming a good mechanic's going to know how to how to deal with these things. Yeah, they've got special tools and little things that need to be thought of. Um, but I'm not too worried about that. But I would say it is hard to find a good diesel mechanic. I've uh, gone through my own problems with that. So maybe before you make a purchase like this, especially on a truck like this, maybe seek out uh, a local diesel mechanic and see, you know, what do they do primarily on? Do they work on these trucks a lot? And if they do, then it just makes your life a lot better. So the next one. Next one, which is always tough. Um, well, there's some more neighbors here. It's kind of embarrassing talking to yourself. Is... Yeah, what is it? I forgot. Uh, okay, so if you looked at one of my other videos again before, I told you I bought this truck from a diesel mechanic in California who bought the truck from the previous owner and the previous owner had his truck service at this diesel mechanic shop that I had. So my point is, <laughs> excuse me, saying this is that these trucks in particular, it's, there's someone here. These trucks, you want to know the history. You want to know who's been working on them. You want to know what they've been doing to them. Have they been pulling it with it? Have they been good with the maintenance? Have they changed out their coolant? Have they, what, things like that. And um, you're walking into a potential rat's nest if you don't know who was the owner of the truck. And they could be nice people. They just may not know the incurtices, in can't say that word, of this truck. And again, it, it just requires a lot of careful, careful maintenance. So that's the, uh, that was probably the eighth one. I think we got a couple more. Oh, actually that was the ninth one, apologize. Okay, and this is the last one. Um, so I told you, I mean, again, I'm assuming you're looking into buying this truck, you've already figured out what you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to make sure you have an EGR cooler, you're gonna have to make sure you have a new oil cooler or the remote oil cooler. You need to make sure you have O-rings for your standpipes and your dummy plugs and your STEC fittings. Um, all that has to be done. And let's just say you're good with your maintenance, right? You're changing your oil when you should and you got your... You have your antifreeze changed as you should and the truck's running perfect and you don't be on it and you don't got it tuned crazy. The one thing that can still get you, which is so frustrating. Apparently, Ford's lifters for the 6.0s are the same as the 6.4s. And apparently, I don't know, but what I've been told is the push rods are too long. And long story short, the bearing on the lifter can get worn. And then if you're not paying attention, which I might miss this, scraps of metal is gonna go down, it's gonna rot out your cam or wear out your cam and then you're just gonna detonate the engine. So all that work, you did all the proper things, did all the proper maintenance, and there's a possibility that the engines could still go because of lifters. That one's got me scared. Um, and we'll see. You know, I, I have told my wife that I'm never gonna let this truck go. I put way too much money in it, and if the engine blows, I might just end up putting a new long block in it. I don't know. 
Hopefully, I think I do that. Yeah. Anyway, um, you need to think long and long and long about this purchase. If you're going to make a purchase for a 6 0 power stroke, make shit. I don't even know. I'd say don't get into debt. That'd be the one thing. Um, would I do it over again? That's a good question. Would I do it over again? I kind of fell into this. I think like most of you guys that are probably looking at these trucks is like, God, they're so, they're priced so well. How could I say no to this when these Cummins are expensive, the Duramax at this, you know, similarly year LBZ is just so expensive and it really draws you in and it's a good looking truck. It's a good looking truck. It sounds good. Um, would I do it again? I, I guess I would. I, I don't want to spend... I don't want to, I'm not going to go into debt to buy a truck and I don't want to spend the money to buy a brand new truck. It's 60, 65, even before COVID, $65,000. That would be my hard earned cash given to a diesel truck. I don't want to do it. So, um, anyway, I guess if I had to do it again, I'd do it again, but just be aware of the pitfalls, know the truck, don't get, you know, you go when you go to look for a truck, just one thing I'd say is like, take a friend with you or your wife or whatever, and tell them before you go there, like, don't let me get enamored by this thing because you get little truck eyes and it's hard to say no. And then all of a sudden you, you wake up the next day and you go, why did I buy this? So that's it for today's episode. Um, we got a couple other things on my diesel truck I want to work, work on over the next month. Um, I've got a couple projects at home where I want to talk about, um, I guess like therapy again and like just how at work when I'm the doctor, I'm convincing people to go to therapy all the time and I say the same story about it all the time and I probably actually already talked about it before in another video, but I wanted to go through it line by line. Uh, so that'll be coming up and then that's pretty much it for now. So um, today's Monday, President's Day. Hope you guys had a good three-day weekend if you're able to do it. And I'll catch you later. Say say goodbye, Luke. Bye. See you next time. See you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.